In this video, I'll present an overview of the main toolbar in CorelDRAW. This toolbar is called the Toolbox and contains the collection of tools you'll be using for drawing and editing. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial. The toolbox is this set of icons, located vertically by default to the left of the workspace. Its exact appearance depends on the workspace I'm using. I'm in the default workspace, which features 16 tools or tool groups. If I open the welcome screen and switch to the light workspace, the toolbar now has 12 tools or tool groups. With the touch workspace, the icons are larger, and illustration, page layout, and illustrator workspaces each have different toolboxes tailored to those workflows. I'll go back to the default workspace. For each icon in the toolbox, I can hover over it to get a tooltip pop-up, which identifies the tool name and what it does. If the tool has a keyboard shortcut, such as the rectangle tool, its shortcut is mentioned as well. A small arrow in the lower right corner of an icon indicates that the tool is part of a tool group. Clicking this arrow opens the flyout of related tools. For example, the polygon tool is grouped with other shape tools, and the freehand tool is grouped with other curve tools. When I select another tool in the group, that tool's icon is now displayed in the toolbox. Clicking an icon activates that tool, and in most cases, the cursor icon changes to match the tool icon. When a tool is active, the status bar at the lower left provides some guidance or tips on how the tool works. As an example, if I click the rectangle tool, the status bar lists what the modifier keys do. Or if I click the transparency tool, the hint is about how to apply fountain transparency. The interactive property bar is the horizontal toolbar located below the menu bar and the standard toolbar. This toolbar contains icons or fields that are relevant to the active tool. So if I activate the polygon tool, I can use the coordinate or size fields, choose the number of sides, set outline width, etc. If the text tool is active, there are fields for font, size, bold, italics, etc. For some of the drawing tools, such as the ellipse tool, I can double-click the icon to open the tool's options window. Many of the tools, such as the text tool, have many more options than those presented in the property bar. For those tools, dockers are the place to look for the full set of options. These are called inspectors for Mac users. The window dockers menu lists all available dockers, and when I open the text docker, I have all of the standard options from the property bar, as well as many more character, paragraph, and frame options. The hints docker is another place to check for more information on the currently active tool. I can read about how to use the tool, see what the modifier keys do, or how to make edits. There are also links to help articles and videos. The toolbox and other toolbars are docked by default, which means they stick to an edge, and they don't move because they're locked. If I want to move the toolbox, I'll start by choosing Window, Toolbars, and toggle off Lock Toolbars. Now each toolbar has a dotted line at the top, and I can drag this line to place the toolbar where I want, and even resize it. This is called a floating toolbar. I can close the toolbox with the X icon, and to get it back, I could go back to Window Toolbars and choose Toolbox. Or I can bring up the Toolbars menu by right-clicking in the blank space of any toolbar, and Toolbox is here as well. If I move the toolbox to the top of the workspace, it will dock there horizontally, and if I move it back to its original spot to the left, it will go back to vertical. And I can lock the toolbars again to keep them from moving. The Add icon at the end of the toolbox can be used to add more tools. The only tool not included so far is Outline Tools, so I'll add that tool group. Or I can click Add again and choose Customize, and in the Commands tab I can find icons for all CorelDRAW tools. I'll open Tools, and drag Document Grid into the toolbox, and I'll do the same for Create Single Curve, dragging that tool straight into the Curves flyout. The Options window is where I could also change tool names, tooltip text, and change or add shortcut keys. While the Options window is open, I can rearrange icons or drag icons that I don't use out of the toolbox. To get back to the toolbox defaults, I'll click Add again 
and choose Reset Toolbar. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the toolbox in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial.